we can quantify this a little bit by actually being a bit more precise about our model of a metal. And this is something called the, the Druda model, which is kind of a basically what we said. We're, we're saying it's a it's positively charged atomic cores, mobile electrons superimposed on top of these atomic cores, and we're just dealing with it as in the sort of classical way and not involving any quantum mechanics. Okay, so that's that's called the Druda model. So in the Druda model, you have these mobile electrons. And let's say you were able to somehow apply an electric field in here. So here's our conductor. And let's say here's some positive charge over here. And that is going to produce some electric field, applied electric field in that direction. And we're looking at the mobile electrons inside. Let's just focus on a single electron. Okay, electron is completely free to move around, and now there's an electric field in that direction, right? So what's going to cause what? There's going to be a force on the electron that way, right? From F equals QE. Well, if there's a force on a mobile charge, or force on any object, what does that cause? Acceleration, right? So the electron would speed up. If we were to plot the speed of an electron in this applied electric field versus time, it would look something like this. So the electron starts, let's say, at rest. It increases in speed due to the applied force, the applied electric field. But every so often, a mobile electron is going to collide with one of these positively charged interatomic cores. Okay, collides with a core and basically loses all of its momentum, loses all of its uh, its speed, gives up its kinetic energy to the atomic core, and so the electron speed drops down to zero. Well, there's still this force here due to the applied electric field, and so the speed increases again, but maybe now it collides with the core here, drops down to zero. Speed increases again, or maybe goes on for a little while, collides with the core, drops down to zero. And this keeps going over and over. And you get this sort of sawtooth looking graph. If I were to average all this out, we'd find some average speed for the mobile electron. And this average speed I'm going to call V bar, V with a little bar over it. This is called the average speed or the drift speed. So on average, the electron moves on a roughly average constant speed with an applied electric field because of this sort of frictional force where it's constantly colliding with the, uh, the uh, atomic cores and slowing down and speeding up and colliding and slowing down. So that relationship, that behavior is parameterized with an equation which says that the drift speed of in mobile charges inside a metal is equal to U times the electric field. What is U? U is called the mobility. Okay. And its units are just uh, meters per second over newtons per coulomb. There's no special unit for it. It's just giving the mobility of the, of, the, of the charges, how easily they can move, how fast they will move, given a particular applied electric field. Okay? So given this, there's a special case when the average speed is equal to zero, when the electrons overall net is, are not moving. We call this situation static equilibrium. So static equilibrium, charges aren't moving. Well, let's look at what's possible and what isn't 
when we have a situation of static equilibrium. Here's V. Let's make a little table. V and the net electric field inside the material. Let's say V is not equal to zero. E not equal to zero. Is that possible? Sure. But is it a case of static equilibrium? No, this is not static equilibrium. V not equal to zero and E equal to zero. Is that possible? Mm -mm. This equation says it can't be, so not possible. V equal to zero and the electric field not equal to zero. Is that possible? Nope. So there's only one possibility left when we're in static equilibrium. That is, if we're in static equilibrium, if the drift speed of these mobile electrons is equal to zero, the net electric field has to be equal to zero. So this is the only possibility in static equilibrium. And you say, wait a minute, how can that be possible? Because let's say we have this situation. Here's a neutral block of metal. I bring a positive charge near this neutral block of metal, and now this positive charge is applying an electric field, so I'll call this, uh, let's see, I'll call this charge one, just to distinguish, and so this is E1 due to charge one, okay? What's going to happen to the mobile charges in here? They're going to shift, right? And so the negative charges, the negative electrons in the electron C would shift in what direction? That way. So I'm going to end up drawing electrons over here, positive charges over here. But now I have a separation of charge. What do those charges create inside that material? Okay, there it's a dipole, creates a dipole. So the charge is, just think about superposition, right? Here's the electric field due to this charge, but now we have electric fields contributed by the charges on these surfaces, right? So let me think about the, uh, the right side and the left side. At the same observation location, what's the electric field due to the charges on that left side? What's the direction? That way, yeah. What's the electric field due to the charges on the right side? Same direction. When I add it all up, what's happened to the electric field? It, the, the, the net electric field has, well, not just, okay, well, it's changed. Has it changed direction? Well, maybe not yet, right? If I add this, if this is, say, fairly large, and I add these two together, then it's, if I add these, these two vectors in the opposite direction, I've changed the, the size, right? So the, the net electric field's gone down. We still have some net electric field, so charges will continue to move because of V equals UE, and so the charge builds up even more on one side and on the other. And if the charges increase here, then these electric field sizes increase. And when does it all stop? When it's equal to zero, when the net electric field is equal to zero, okay? So there's some, when you bring a charge nearby, there's some short amount of time when things aren't in static equilibrium. The charges are moving about, okay, and things are shifting. When does it stop? When does that shifting stop? When the electric field is equal to zero. So this is an important result. The net electric field inside a conductor
at static equilibrium, is zero. And it's one of those sentences where every single word is absolutely important. It's not just the electric field due to a single object, it's the net electric field due to everything. It's not in an insulator, it's in a conductor. We're talking about static equilibrium, not cases like in a circuit where we'll see later on where there are charges moving continuously. We're talking about a static equilibrium situation, so V is equal to zero. V bar, I should say, is equal to zero. And the net electric field is equal to zero. Okay, So that encapsulates a lot, but it's extremely important to understand. Okay. Questions? Okay, I want to I want to just sum up what we've talked about, and then if there's time, I think there'll be at least a few minutes, one or two minutes. We'll try an example question, and then we'll do some more next time as well. So what have we talked about? We've talked about Conductors versus insulators. Things to think about. Are there mobile charges? In an insulator, the answer is... No. In the conductor, the answer is yes. Okay. Um, where are the excess charges? In an insulator, they can be inside, outside, on the surface, doesn't matter, right? Inside or surface. In a conductor, it's surface only. Uh, let's say, does the charge tend to spread around? An insulator, the answer is no. Conductor, it's yes. Okay. And then more general, well, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, E net. E net inside uh, at static equilibrium. In an insulator, does the net electric field have to be zero at static equilibrium? No, there's no, nothing that says it has to be. So, uh, E, we can say E can be not equal to zero. But in a conductor, E net is equal to zero. Okay. And then uh, lastly, maybe this is a bit more general, but um, just in general, how do we deal with polarization? And the key thing to keep in mind is that for an insulator, we're talking about induced dipoles. And we can quantify that dipole moment with P is equal to alpha times E. In a conductor, we're talking about shift, shifting mobile charges. And the key equation to keep in mind is that the average drift speed is equal to the mobility times the electric field. Okay? Questions?